And how do you view the role of prisons in society today? Well, remember back during when we were young, and we was back during the Vietnam War, we used to talk about the military industrial complex. Well, now you have the prison really? industrial complex. And you have what um, is the ultimate um, solution to America's economic problem. Those who are poor, those who are powerless, those who have no access to the wealth that one needs to survive, and uh, you know, perhaps wealth isn't, but the resources one needs to survive. Uh, in an area where um, there is corporate downsizing and there are no jobs and there is only a service economy and education is being cut, which is the only rung by which people can climb. Um, the only growth industry in this part of Pennsylvania, in the eastern United States, in the southern United States, in the western United States, is quote unquote corrections, for want of a better word. The corrections industry is booming. And, uh, I mean, this, this joint here ain't five years old. Some corporations made a mint off of this thing. This thing called millions of dollars, millions of dollars to be built and constructed. But second to that, you have across the United States for the first time in modern history, you have small rural counties and districts begging the government Build a prison here, please. There was a time when it was, uh-uh, not in my backyard. You better not. I don't want that here. But now they're talking about, uh-huh, jobs. <laughs> you know, and you know, this, that's the, that's the reality. That's the reality that we're working with. And, of course, blacks, Latinos, Hispanics, Mexicans in the West, and Puerto Ricans in the East, and uh, so-called white trash, poor whites, are the raw material now. We're like the hamburgers and McDonald's. We're the raw material now. We're being fed into this. And uh, what you see in Congress and what you see in state houses are the greasing of the conveyor belt on that, you know, that meat patty line. Because there are no laws anymore. Think about it. You know, when you look at the trend of the law, and I mean, analyze the cases, read the cases, and see what they're saying. You don't hear anybody talking about, you know, uh, search and seizure, you know, Fourth Amendment, and, or any other amendment. What you hear in popular discourse on talk radio stations or in the newspaper is lock them up, lock them up yesterday, or kill them. You see? And it, it becomes a political, again, an engine feeding an industry the prison industrial complex, you see. And it is so naked now, so negative now, that as Monica said, you can have over 1.1 million people in this prison, in these prisons. And you have people saying, well, they need to lock up more people. I mean, you have people actually saying that. Of course, they don't know what they're talking about, but they're just following a script that has been laid down to them you know, by the media, by the politicians. When you spoke about, you know, that, I thought about a recent article that was in the New York Times. Um, you may have seen it uh, by um, Saul Wachler, who used to be the uh, presiding chief judge of uh, the New York Court of Appeals. And I laughed when I read it. I really did. I had a belly laugh. Because here was a guy who was, for all intents and purposes, a hanging judge. And if somebody, you know, made a claim before his court, well, you, huh, what you, no, you get nothing. Ah. Shot people down like, you know, it was fun. But in his article, he talked about the difference between reading a brief about an inmate who sued about the humiliation of strip surgery and going through that experience himself and how devastated he was by it. But every one of those 1.1 million people and, I mean, increasingly, when you look at least uh, 
across the country now, you don't have to go to prison to go through that humiliation. You can go to your average uh, police station down the block. You know, someone gets arrested for a traffic violation, a ticket. And men and women are being strip searched in every city of America. You see what I'm saying? So, you know, when he was in a position of power, and he could have said, this is unconstitutional, or it violates the same. Oh, no. Doesn't make a claim. Next, denied. And he didn't sense how wrong, how cold-hearted that was until it was him that had to spread his buttocks. It was him who had to pull his uh, penis back. And you understand what I'm saying? It became a whole other reality. You know, Jamaicans have a saying, who feels it, knows it. Well, now he knows it. A little too late, though, ain't it? Mumi Abu Jamal's life is valuable to all human life. Mumi Abu Jamal's life is valuable to this earth. Mumi Abu Jamal's wisdom, his knowledge, is valuable to our offspring, to the young, to the unborn. We got to free Mumi Abu Jamal, brick by brick, wall by wall. We have to free Mumi Abu Jamal. Let's send a message May 17th.